Chapter 3 Components and Systems Introduction Weight Shift Control, WSC aircraft come in an array of shapes and sizes, but the basic design features are fundamentally the same. All WSC consist of a F-flexible wing made with a sail fitted over a rigid airframe. A separate carriage is the fuselage which consists of the F-Lite deck, propulsion system, and landing gear. Figure 3-1 Wing The wing has a structural frame that the sail fits over. Although the wing structure is rigid, it is designed to move and allow the sail to FLX and the wing to deform or warp, to provide a simple control system with no pulleys, push rods, hinges, control cables, or separate control surfaces. This simplifies S maintenance and reduces the cost and weight of the wing. Each wing is built from high-quality aircraft parts including alloyed aluminum tubes, stainless steel cables, hardware, and specially designed sailcloth. Wing frame components The structural frame of the wing is composed of the leading edges, keel, crossbar, pilot control frame, king post and wire slash struts. The wing frame is a number of structural triangles formed by the wing components. These triangles, braced by wires and struts, provide a strong and lightweight frame to support the FLXable sail. Figure 3-2, leading edges Leading edges are tube assemblies that are at the front of the wing, the leading edges of the wing airfoil. These are swept back to form the front shape of the wing and attached to each other with nose plates. The leading edges support the airfoil and are designed to FLX as part of the wing structure. The leading edges are each made up of two main sections, an inboard and an outboard section, as shown in figures 3-2 and 3-3. Additional tubing sleeves are typically used for added strength where the leading edge attaches to the nose plates, and where the inboard and outboard tubes join at the crossbar attachment. This sleeving can be internal or external depending on the specific C manufacturer's design. Typically, additional sleeving is used throughout the leading edges at various locations to strengthen and vary the FLX for the particular design of the wing. Each manufacturer and make slash model uses different internal and external sleeving to accomplish specific C strength and FLX characteristics. Generally, the inboard sections are stiffer and the outboard leading edge section FLXs as part of the FLXable wing design. Sleeving is commonly added throughout the aircraft where bolt holes are drilled through the tubing to reinforce it around the bolt hole. The outboard leading edge sections can be removed to pack up the wing into a short pack which is commonly used for shipping. Figure 3-3 Keel The wing keel is like that of a boat keel, the center of the wing, fore and aft. It attaches to the leading edges at the nose plate and performs a number of important functions. It is the structure where the carriage attaches to the wing, and it is the wing structure that connects the center section of the sail at the keel pocket, discussed later in this chapter in the sail section. The control frame and king post, if so equipped, also attaches to the keel. It also provides structure for the upper and lower wires, if so equipped, and a reference or anchor for the crossbar which needs some movement in relation to the keel for roll control. The keel is rigid and is not designed to FLX nor is it highly stressed like the leading edges except where the undercarriage attaches to the wing. Sleeving is normally added to strengthen this middle area as well as the nose attachment and rear cable attachments. Crossbar The crossbar is two aluminum tube sections hinged above the keel that attach to the leading edges. The crossbar is tensioned back with the crossbar tensioning cables, which pushes the leading edges forward to conform to the sail. These crossbar tensioning cables are attached at the rear of the keel when the wing is tensioned into FL ying position. Figure 3-4 these crossbar sections are under a compression load and designed to be stiff with no bending. A larger diameter tube is typically used to avoid any bending when the wing is FL ying. A ding, dent, or bend in the crossbar could spell disaster during FL light because it is one of the main structural members that holds leading edges into position during FL light. For wing takedown and packing, the crossbar haulback cables are released, the crossbar hinge center moves forward, and the leading edges rotate and toward the keel about the nose plates and come together allowing the wing to fold down into a long tube for transport and or storage. Control frame The triangle-shaped control frame serves two main purposes. It provides the lower structure for the wing and is the control bar for the pilot. The control frame is bolted to the keel with two down tubes extending from the keel attachment to the horizontal base tube, which is the pilot's control bar. Figures 3-2, 3-5, and 3-6, control frame corner brackets at the bottom of the down tubes provide the wing structural attachments for the FL ying cables or struts that attach to each leading edge slash crossbar junction, and secure the control bar fore and aft to the wing with the front and back wires attached to nose plates in the aft section of the keel. Figures 3-5 and 3-6. During FL light, the down tubes are similar in compression to the crossbar and must be stiff and straight to maintain structural integrity. The base tube slash control bar is under tension during FL light. 
Front and rear FL Ying wires hold the control frame in place fore and aft. Side FL Ying wires hold the control frame in place side to side and provide structure to hold the wings in place while FL Ying. Figures 3 to 2, 3 to 5, and 3 to 6, strutted wings use struts in place of the side FL Ying wires, which is discussed later in this chapter. Training bars are added for dual control so the person in back can FLY the aircraft. These are typically used by an instructor for training but can be used by a passenger in the back also. Figure 37, King post with wires on top wing design similar to the lower control frame holding the wing in position during FLI, the king post is attached to the keel and supports the upper ground wires which hold the wing in position on the ground and negative loads during FLI. Figure 32, it also provides a structure for reflex lines which is discussed later in wing systems. Topless wings with struts similar to airplanes with struts to support the wings, some WSC aircraft replace side FL Ying wires with struts, eliminating the king post and ground wires on top of the wing. This provides a number of benefit TS, but primarily, no king post is needed because the struts can take a compression load and hold the wings up on the ground, and also take the negative loads during FLI. With struts, a WSC aircraft is much shorter in height allowing it to fly T into hangars with lower doors and ceilings. This can make a big difference in finding a suitable storage for the aircraft if leaving it set up. Figure 38 Some strutted designs allow the wings to be folded back while still on the carriage. This can also be helpful when using a smaller space for storage by folding the wing up without taking it off the carriage. Figure 39 It is also convenient for sea trikes since the aircraft does not have to be taken out of the water to fold up the wing. Strutted wings have a clean upper surface with no holes required for the king post or wires to go through the top of the sail. This reduces interference drag on the top of the wing. Increasing overall efficiency, no holes in the sail also eliminates any high pressure leakage from underneath the wing getting sucked up to the lower pressure on top of the wing. Figure 310, Sail Components The sail is a highly reefy Ned design that integrates with its wing frame. Each sail and wing frame are designed for each other and are not interchangeable with other sails or wings. Modern sails are designed with complex geometry and sewn to precision to achieve a highly efficient design. Because of the FLX ability of the wing frame and the modern techniques in sail design, the leading edge can have a curved shape which adds to the efficiency and stability of the wing. Figure 311 Battens and leading edge stiffener as discussed in the aerodynamics section, stiff preformed battens are the airfoil ribs that maintain the airfoil shape from the root to the tips. Additionally, a foam or mylar stiffener is inserted in a pocket at the leading edge to keep a rigid airfoil shape between the battens from the leading edge up to the airfoil high point. Double surface wings have additional ribs on the bottom surface that are straight or formed to maintain the bottom surface camber. Sail material and panels Sail material is a combination of polyester materials designed with different weaves, thickness, and orientation to phi T the design mission of the wing. Panels are cut to different shapes and laid down at different angles to provide the stiffness and FLX ability where needed for the specific C wing design. Automated machines typically cut the fabric to precision tolerances and the panels are sewn together with high strength thread. Pockets and hardware pockets are added for battens and hardware is installed for the wing frame and wire attachments. Trailing edge line or wires are sometimes added for reinforcement and can be used for tuning. Battens are held in with a variety of batten ties or other methods unique to the manufacturer. Figure 312, sail attachment to wing frame The sail is attached to the wing frame at the nose and the tips. A keel pocket towards the back of the sail secures the sail to the wing keel. Figure 313, cables and hardware cables are used throughout the wing frame and sail to hold components in place and act as structure to carry loads. Flight and ground cables are stainless steel and attached to components with tangs or other hardware depending on the application. Cables are secured at each end with thimbles and swashed fightings. Figure 3-5 shows detail of typical swashed fightings. A variety of hardware is used for attaching these swashed cable fightings to the airframe. Each manufacturer has different hardware for wing components. Figures 3-14 and 3-15. Wing systems reflex systems as discussed in the aerodynamics section, the trailing edge near the root and the tips must stay up during unusually low or negative angles of attack, figure 229, to maintain a positive pitch stability for the aircraft. There are a number of reflex systems used to accomplish this in emergency situations. Reflex cables. Most wings with a king post use cables to hold the trailing edge up at unusually low or negative angles of attack. These reflex cables are secured to the top of the king post and attached to several positions on the trailing edge where the battens are located. Different manufacturers have different positions where these are attached, depending on the design of the wing. 
Reflex cables also provide additional reflex at high speeds because the drag of the wires pulls up the trailing edge, creating more reflex at these higher speeds. Figure 316, washout struts, tubes near the tips that keep the tip trailing edge up during very low or negative angles of attack. They can be inside or outside the double surface of a wing. The reflex cables may not go to the wingtip, so washout struts are used to hold up the trailing edge at the tip at very low and negative angles of attack. Figure 317 Sprogs, for wings using struts with no king post, sprogs are used to keep the inboard trailing edge up in place of the reflex cables. A wire attached to the top of the leading edge holds the sprog up in place. Figure 318 Pitch control system The pitch control system is a simple hinge on the keel at the hang point that allows the pilot to push the control bar out and pull the control bar into control pitch. This wing attachment is different for each manufacturer, but all designs have this hang point wing attachment so the control bar is always perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. This raising and lowering of the nose is the pitch control system for the WSC aircraft. Figures 2-7 and 3-19 Roll control system control bar movement from side to side controls the roll about the longitudinal axis. The wing attachment hang point allows the carriage to roll around the wing keel. Thus, it can also be looked at from the carriage point of view. When the control bar is moved side to side, the wing rotates around the wing keel relative to the carriage. Figures 2 to 31 and 3 to 19, it would phi RSD appear that moving the control bar to one side, thus shifting weight to the opposite side, could alone bank the aircraft. It is true that shifting weight to the right would naturally bank the aircraft to the right and put it into a right-hand turn. However, the weight alone is not enough to provide adequate roll control for practical FLI. As weight is moved to one side, the keel is pulled closer to that side's leading edge. The actual keel movement is limited to only 1 to 2 inches each side of center. However, this limited keel movement is sufficient to warp the wing, changing the twist side to side, as discussed earlier in the aerodynamics section, to roll the aircraft, Figure 224, by changing the lift side to side. Simply, the shifting of weight from side to side pulls the keel toward the leading edge on that side and warps the wing to roll the aircraft. Besides the keel shifting relative to the leading edges and crossbar, overall roll control is adjusted by the designers to phi t the mission of the wing through sail material slash stiffness, leading edge stiffness slash FLX ability, amount of twist, amount of travel the keel is allowed, airfoil shape, and the planform of the wing. Figures 3 to 20 and 3 to 21, trim systems. There are a number of trim systems to relieve the control pressures for pilots to FLY at different hands off trim speeds. Ground adjustable trim allows the pilot to adjust the trim speed of the wing on the ground and remain at one speed during FLI, while FLI adjustable trim systems can change the trim speed in FLI. Ground adjustable trim systems, the most common ground adjustable trim system, and typical of most aircraft is moving the wing attachment hang point forward for faster trim speeds and aft for slower trim speeds. Each manufacturer has different hardware, but the basics of sliding the carriage wing hang point forward and backward on the keel is similar for all. As an example, moving the hang point at the furthest aft position to the furthest forward position could speed the wing up 20 knots. This in turn moves the control bar position back to a new hands-off trim speed. Another less commonly used method of increasing trim speed is to increase tension on the crossbar by pulling it back further, slightly increasing the nose angle and reducing twist. This increases the angle of attack, AOA, of the tips producing more lift, and it lowers the nose to a higher trim speed. This is a typical in FLI trim adjustment for high-performance hang gliders. The roll control is diminished with this faster and stiffer wing. Ground adjustable trim systems are described in the pilot's operating handbook, POH, for each aircraft. Different loads may require different pitch settings. In flight adjustable trim systems being able to adjust the trim systems in FLIT has a number of advantages as discussed later in the FLIT sections. A number of in-flight adjustable systems are available with different manufacturers. A common in FLIT adjustable trim system is raising and lowering the trailing edge. Raising the trailing edge increases airfoil reflex and slows the wing. Lowering the trailing edge decreases airfoil reflex and speeds up the wing. Typically, a crank on a downtube controls a wire that runs up the downtube to the top of the wing. As a result of moving the crank, the trailing edge wires are raised and lowered and the trim speed changed. Figure 322, hydraulic or electrical systems can move the hang point on the wing for other in-flight trim systems. Figure 323, another pilot actuated trim system in FLI is an elastic system in which the pilot increases tension on the elastic system which raises the nose for climb and slower FLI. Figure 324, Carriage The carriage is a completely separate structure from the wing. 
Without the wing, the carriage can be driven around if needed. Most of the weight and cost of the WSC aircraft is in the carriage. There is a wide range of carriage designs from the most simple and basic open trikes to the more sophisticated and complex trikes that integrate cowlings and offer a number of adjustments for the pilot and passenger, resulting in comfort and less fatigue during FL Ying. Generally, the more complex the trike, the more it costs, weighs, and the more power it requires for similar wings. Figure 325, landing struts attached to the rear wheels provide structure for the main landing gear, and a front fork provides the landing gear structure for the front wheel. An engine mount attaches to the mast, providing ST or UCT or EFO or THE propulsion system to attach to the carriage. Figure 326, landing gear The landing gear provides support to the WSC aircraft on the ground and absorbs the shock to reduce the stresses on the pilot and the aircraft during landings. The landing gear is made up of the front wheel, which has a lighter load and is used for steering, and the main or rear landing gear, which takes most of the load for the aircraft. Figure 326, the front steering fork for the nose wheel has foot rests attached that the pilot uses for steering the WSC aircraft on the ground. Besides ground steering, the foot controls are similar to driving a car, left foot pedal is brakes on the ground only, and right foot is throttle and power on the ground and in FLI. Figure 327, the front fork typically is camber so it naturally tracks in the direction of travel similar to a motorcycle front fork. For training, a second steering control is installed with a connecting rod so the instructor can sit in back and steer the carriage on the ground using the nose wheel. Figure 328, steering dampers are sometimes used to stabilize the front wheel from shimmying at higher speeds during takeoff and landing. Figure 329, the front wheel sometimes has shock absorbers or the tire itself can act as the shock absorber. The front wheel typically has a disc or a drum brake, mechanical or hydraulic. Figures 3-30 and 3-31, a front brake is lighter and simpler than rear brakes, but some carriage brake systems utilize the rear brakes. A parking brake is extremely useful for securing the aircraft on the ground without needing chocks for securing the aircraft before takeoff and after landing. A number of parking brake systems are utilized by different manufacturers. Figure 332, the main landing gear is the two rear wheels of the WSC aircraft. Since the center of gravity, CG, is much closer to the rear wheels, most of the weight for the aircraft is carried on the rear wheels for taxi, takeoff, and landings. There are a number of different configurations for the main gear. A conventional configuration has two separate systems for each rear wheel. Each side is two structural triangles, one horizontal and one vertical. The horizontal triangle consists of a drag strut from the wheel forward to the keel or forward structure to maintain the wheel's fore and aft position, and the main landing gear strut. Both the main and the drag struts can pivot about the attachment to the keel as part of the shock system. The vertical triangle consists of the main landing strut and the shock strut attached to the wheel and up to the keel structure, figure 336, or other structures such as the engine mount shown in figure 333, which houses the compressed nitrogen and oil oleo shock absorber. There are a number of other main landing gear configurations and shock absorbing systems such as wire bracing with bungee cord shocks, figure 334, fiberglass or flexible fiberglass or steel, main gears with no struts, figure 335, and any variation of these. Carriages designed for faster speeds may have streamlined landing gear systems. Figures 3-36 and 3-37. As discussed in the nose wheel section, the carriage can have main landing gear brakes on both main landing gear wheels that can be drum or disc and controlled by mechanical or hydraulic actuation. Each manufacturer has different designs and options. Tires can also assist as shock absorbers for landings. Large Tundra tires add signify can't shock absorbing capability and are used for operations on soft fields, rough fields, and sand. Figure 338, generally, the faster WSC aircraft used for airport operations have narrower tires to eliminate drag. Landing gear for water and snow besides landing gear for land, there are landing gear systems for water, weight shift control C, and snow, ski equipped. If ski equipped, skis are added to the bottom of the wheels or replace the wheels. If C-equipped, a complete system provides aircraft flotation and steering using rudders similar to a boat. The water rudders are foot-controlled, similar to WSCL steering on the ground. Two types of C-equipped systems are the FL Ying boat and pontoon. The FL Ying boat is a solid or inflatable boat that the WSC aircraft phi TS into, and its fuselage is secured to as well. Figure 339, this is generally used for rougher seas in the ocean and, with the extra drag of the boat itself, 
This typically uses a larger wing and is therefore a slower FL Ying WSC aircraft. The boat design is known to be more stable in rough seas and assists in keeping less water from splashing up so pilot and passenger stay drier. The pontoon system is used for calmer water, has less drag while FL Ying, and therefore can accommodate faster, smaller wings. Figure 340, both the FL Ying boat and the pontoon system need more horsepower than land operations for two reasons, Phi RST, to provide enough thrust to accelerate to take off speed with the extra drag of the boat or pontoons on the water. And second, to provide enough extra thrust to overcome the additional drag of the boat or pontoons in the air for FLite. Electrical systems WSC aircraft are typically equipped with a 12-volt direct current DC electrical system. A basic WSC aircraft electrical system consists of a magneto-slash-generator, voltage regulator, battery, master-slash-battery switch, and associated electrical wiring. Electrical energy stored in a battery provides a source of electrical power for starting the engine and other electrical loads for the WSC aircraft. The electrical system is typically turned on or off with a master switch. Turning the master switch to the on position provides electrical energy from the battery to all the electrical equipment circuits with the exception of the ignition system. Equipment that commonly uses the electrical system energy includes position lights, anti-collision lights, instrument lights, radio equipment, navigation equipment, electronic instrumentation, electric fuel pump, starting motor, electric heating systems, gloves, socks, pants, vests, jackets, etc. Fuses or circuit breakers are used in the electrical system to protect the circuits and equipment from electrical overload. Spare fuses of the proper amperage should be carried in the WSC aircraft to replace defective or blown fuses. Circuit breakers have the same function as a fuse but can be manually reset, rather than replaced, if an overload condition occurs in the electrical system. Placards at the fuse or circuit breaker panel identify the circuit by name and show the amperage limit. An ammeter may be used to monitor the performance of the electrical system. The ammeter shows if the magneto slash generator is producing an adequate supply of electrical power. It also indicates whether or not the battery is receiving an electrical charge. A voltage meter also provides electrical information about battery voltage, an additional status of the electrical system. Ballistic parachute and additional safety system available is a ballistic parachute system. In the case of a structural failure because of a mid-air collision or an engine out over hostile terrain such as a forest, the ballistic parachute provides an added safety system. The parachute is sized so that when used, the complete aircraft comes down under canopy. Details of ballistic parachute system use are covered in more detail in Chapter 13, Abnormal and Emergency Operations. When the system is activated, a rocket shoots out pulling the parachute system to full line stretch, and forcing the parachute out and away from the carriage and wing. The preferred point of attachment for the parachute is on top of the wing at the hang point. This allows the WSC aircraft to descend level and land on the wheels, helping to absorb the shock. This requires routing from the chute to the top of the wing with O-rings to be able to remove this routing to easily take the wing off the carriage. Alternate attach points where there is no routing to the top of the wing are the mast and engine attachment points, However, this has the WSC aircraft descending nose down when activated. The ballistic parachute canister can be mounted in a number of locations on the WSC, typically on the carriage pointed sideways to avoid entanglement with the propeller. The actuation handle is mounted in the FLI deck for pilot use when needed. Figures 3-41 and 3-42 Flight deck The FLI deck is where the pilot and passenger sit. It is typically a tandem seating with the pilot in front and the passenger in back. When the WSC aircraft is used for instruction, the instructor typically sits in back and must have access to the FLIT controls. The pilot in the front has ground and FLIT controls. The right foot controls a foot throttle and the left foot controls the brake. This is similar to throttle and brake controls on an automobile. The feet also control ground steering by moving the front fork with the foot pedals. A foot throttle and foot brake can be added to optional ground steering control for use by an instructor sitting in back. A hand cruise throttle is typically used when the pilot can set it and it stays set. This cruise throttle is usually in a position where the instructor in the back seat can also operate it. Figures 3 to 43, the wing FLI control bar is in a position at chest height for the pilot in the front seat. Additional extensions are added for a passenger or instructor to use if seated in the back seat. Figure 3 7, ignition switches are sometimes included in the cruise control throttle housing or as a separate set of switches. If a WSC is used for instruction, the ignition switches should be within reach of the instructor sitting in the back seat. Figures 3 to 43, the ballistic parachute handle must be accessible for use when needed but not put in a position where it could be accidentally deployed. 
Some WSC aircraft have two handles, one for the front and one for the back. Additional controls for starting, such as the choke or enricher, must be accessible to the pilot. Dashboards and instrument panels The instrument panel is in front of the pilot and provides engine, FLI, navigation, and communications information. The pilot is responsible for maintaining collision avoidance with a proper and continuous visual scan around the aircraft, as well as monitoring the information available from the instrument panel. The pilot must process the outside cues along with the instrumentation throughout the FLI for a sound decision-making process. The ignition switches, which may be located on the instrument panel or within the instructor's reach for WSC used for instruction, has two positions, on, which allows power to make contact with the spark plugs, or off, which is a closed switch to ground and removes the power source from the spark plugs. Typically, WSC engines have two spark plugs per cylinder, two switches, and two completely separate ignition systems. Some single-place WSCs with smaller engines have only one spark plug per cylinder, one ignition switch, and a single ignition system. For example, for a two-stroke liquid-cooled engine, the manufacturer may require instrumentation to monitor engine exhaust gas temperatures, EGT, water temperatures, and revolutions per minute, RPM. Additionally, for a four-stroke engine, the manufacturer may additionally require oil temperature and pressure gauges. For a simple two-stroke air-cooled engine, the manufacturer's requirement may be EGT, cylinder head temperature, CHT, and RPM instrumentation. Generally, most electrical or engine controls are located on the dashboard and less required to be reached by the instructor for FLI instruction. Dashboards are as varied as the manufacturers and the purpose of the aircraft, from simple to complex. Classical analog gauges are common, but digital instruments are becoming more popular with light sport aircraft, LSA. Overall, no instrumentation is required for ELSA, but for SLSA an airspeed indicator is usually required, and engine manufacturers require certain instruments be installed on the aircraft to monitor the performance of the particular engine. Flight instruments The specificity theory of operation and details of instruments is covered in the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, and is a prerequisite to this section on FLI instruments. The altimeter is the most important FLI instrument, and should be on every WSC aircraft. It is used to maintain the proper altitude at airports, during cruise, and provides other aircraft position information for the safety of all. The vertical speed indicator, VSI, is one tool to assist the pilot with the performance of the aircraft. The airspeed indicator, ASI, is used to optimize performance of the aircraft, compare predicted to actual performance, and to operate within the limitations of the aircraft. Navigation instruments A global positioning system, GPS, is typically used as a navigation and FLI aid for most WSC aircraft. A magnetic compass is commonly used as a primary navigation system or as a backup when a GPS system is used. Engine instruments There is a variety of engine instruments that are used. The most basic is the engine RPM, which determines the power of the engine. Specific engine instruments are discussed in the power plant section. Instrument panel arrangements Instrument panels vary greatly from the basic to the complex. Figure 344 depicts a standard instrument panel supplied by the manufacturer with a portable GPS added in the middle. Electrical components are neatly arranged along the top. Large analog airspeed, left, and altitude, right, FLI instruments are installed in the middle with the portable GPS installed between the two. The bottom stack consists of the basic engine instruments for a simple two-stroke air-cooled engine, RPM for power, top, CHT, middle, and EGT, bottom. A more advanced analog panel with a user radio and GPS added is shown in figure 345. Airspeed, vertical speed indicator, and altitude large FLI instruments are along. The top. A navigational gyro is in the middle of the panel. The bottom row consists of four-stroke engine instruments, electrical and remote fuel gauge. The user-installed radio and GPS complete a well-equipped instrument panel. A hybrid panel of analog, digital, and portable instruments is shown in figure 346. The integrated digital panel does provide more options in a smaller space. One panel can now have aircraft performance screens, engine system screens, navigation screens, communication screens, attitude indicator, and any combination of these. Figure 347. Communications There are three types of communication systems used in WSC aircraft. 1. Communications between the pilot and passenger while inside the aircraft. 2. Aircraft radio communications with other aircraft and control towers. 3. Radar position indicator communications from the WSC aircraft to control towers, transponder. 
easy and clear communications between the pilot and passenger, or between the instructor and student inside the FLI deck is important for the safety and enjoyment of both. Modern communication systems have advanced noise-canceling systems in headphones and microphones to reduce engine noise and blast of air. Each system is unique, and the quality of the sound and noise-canceling capability of the system varies. Some use voice-activated systems in which headphones activate only when someone is speaking into the microphone, others have a steady state in which there is no additional control of the voice activation. Since there is a large difference in systems available, it is best to test systems to determine what is best for the WSC aircraft being FL owned. Figure 348, an aircraft radio is required for FL Ying in any tower-controlled airspace. Using a radio is not required at airports without a control tower but it is recommended for the safety of self, passengers, pilots in the air, and people slash property on the ground. To broadcast to a tower or other aircraft, press a push to talk, PTT, button. A complete FLI deck radio and accessory system schematic is shown in figure 349. A radar signal receiver slash transmitter system is required at busy commercial airports, classes C and B, and at altitudes above 10,000 feet mean sea level, MSL, unless the aircraft was certified ed without an electrical system to power the unit. This is known as a mode C transponder that sends a signal giving the control tower an exact location and altitude of aircraft. Figure 347, power plant system The power plant system is composed of the fuel system, engine, gearbox, and propeller. Here we will point out the basic components of these systems with their function and details covered in Chapter 4, Power Plant System. Fuel system components The WSC aircraft is equipped with fuel tanks usually ranging in capacity from 5 to 20 gallons. As with any aircraft, knowing how much fuel the tank holds is crucial to FLI operations. The LSA definition has no limitations on the size of the fuel tank, unlike its ultralight vehicle predecessor. Generally, the fuel tank is located close to the CG, so fuel burn does not affect the balance of the carriage. Some fuel tanks are clear for visual inspection of the amount of fuel on board, Figure 350, while others have tanks that are not visible and require fuel level probes for instrument panel indication of fuel. Figure 351, fuel lines exit the fuel tank, and may incorporate a primer bulb, fuel filters, fuel pump, and or a primer system, all of which must be integrated into the carriage. A fuel venting system is also required, which can be a hole in the fuel fire or lines running to vent at an appropriate location. A fuel shutoff valve may be installed and can be located anywhere in the fuel line. Some designs have a fuel tank sump drain valve to remove water and solid contaminants. Engine and gearbox The typical WSC aircraft engine can be two or four stroke, liquid or air cooled, and normally ranges from 50 to 100 horsepower. Some engines have electric starters and some have pull starters. Most WSC aircraft engines have reduction drives that, when attached, reduce the propeller RPM from half to one quarter the engine RPM. Figure 352. A signify can amount of the total aircraft empty weight is determined by the power plant, engine, gearbox, and propeller, and mounting configuration. When trailering the WSC aircraft over bumpy terrain or over long trips, the bouncing of the carriage in the trailer can put extreme stress on this mounting system. In addition, repeated hard landings of the carriage can also stress the welds of the engine mount. Consistent detailed inspections of the engine mount should be an important part of every pre-flight and post-flight inspection. The power plant systems are as varied as the WSC aircraft they power. Modern technology has allowed these systems to become lighter, quieter, more efficient, and, most importantly, dependable. The propeller propellers are power converters that change the engine horsepower into thrust. Thrust is the force that propels the aircraft through the air by pushing the WSC aircraft forward. Aerodynamically speaking, a propeller is a rotating airfoil and the same principles that apply to the wing applies to the propeller except the propeller provides a horizontal force of thrust. Propellers typically consist of two, three, or four blades. Figures 3 to 53 and 3 to 54, propellers can be ground adjustable or phi crossed pitch. Variable pitch FLI propellers are not allowed on LSA. The pitch should be properly set for your WSC aircraft to provide the recommended RPM of the engine at full power. The PO should be consulted if there is any question about the propeller RPM and adjusting or replacing the propeller. Propellers are specifically matched to the engine power, gear reduction and speed range of the aircraft. Therefore, not just any propeller may be put on any engine. The PO requires specific C propellers that are matched for each aircraft. As with an airplane propeller, the WSC aircraft propeller turns at such high speeds that it becomes invisible when in motion. 
the dangers of a turning propeller require every pilot to maintain the highest level of safety and respect for the consequences of body parts, pets, and debris coming in contact with a rotating propeller. Debris on the takeoff slash landing file is a danger to the propeller, as well as to the people who may be in the prop wash area behind or on the side of the propeller. Stones, small pieces of metal, and sticks can become dangerous projectiles if kicked into the propeller during startup, taxi, takeoff, and landing. Just as with any airframe or wing component of a WSC aircraft, if the propeller becomes damaged, nicked, or dinged, the aircraft's performance can be greatly affected. Some pilots elect to use tape or rock deflector guards to protect the leading edge from rock slash debris damage. Regardless, taking proper care of the propeller is as critical as proper engine and wing care. Chapter Summary Components and Systems consist of two primary subassemblies, wing and carriage. The main wing component is the frame, which is composed of the leading edges, keel, crossbar, and control frame. The typical wing frame has lower wires and upper wires with a king post. The strutted version has wing struts and no upper rigging. The frame is designed so the outboard leading edge is FLX, and it also has a control system that allows the keel to move side to side relative to the leading edges for roll control. The sail is designed specifically for the frame with battens and leading edge stiffener provide the rigid airfoil shape of the sail. The carriage is separate from the wing. Different wings can be put on the same carriage at separate times for different types of FL ying, example, large wing is used for FL ying low and slow where a small wing can be used for FL ying fast and long cross-country missions. As discussed in Chapter 2, Aerodynamics, each wing must be approved by the manufacturer to go on a specific C carriage. Main carriage components are the mast, carriage keel, front tube, and engine mount. This structure houses the FLI deck, power plant, and landing gear. The carriage structure also houses system components such as the electrical system, ballistic parachute, and fuel tank. The FLI deck is the heart of the carriage providing pilot systems for communications, navigation, engine-slash-flight-slash-navigation instruments, and electrical controls.